we have emphasized that there is a dynamic between heaven and earth. The heaven is God's throne. The earth is his footstool. And the footstool is to serve the Lord. The earth was supposed to serve the Lord. And the Bible says that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father until his enemies be made his footstool. So God has enemies on this earth that are attached to the wicked wisdom that Satan spoke from the beginning. The 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 um, brood of vipers, so to speak. You know, John the Baptist says, you generation of vipers, brood of vipers. Well, those are those who are connected to Satan or those that are not been born again. When you became born again, you entered into covenant with the Lord. And so you received his word. You received the Lordship of Jesus. You received his, his Holy Spirit and you agreed to be one with him and that those that don't have that knowledge, um, they, whether they know or not, they resist God. That's why people resist God. That's, that's why there is persecution of the gospel. Amen. Because there are those who, who are called the seed of Satan. Amen. Those that are planted by him, those that walk in darkness, those that resist the light. And so the light, the Bible says this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world and people chose darkness rather than the light. But there's supposed to be a response. And that's what we've been preaching continually, that there's supposed to be a response to the light. The light shows you what state you are in. And if you will truthfully acknowledge what state that you're in when the light is shown, it would cause repentance. It would cause brokenness. It would cause contriteness. Amen. And so the, the gospel, the Bible says that if the gospel be hid, it is hid to those who are lost or perishing, whom the God, little g of this world, has blinded, lest the light of the glorious gospel would shine unto them. So the gospel is a gospel of glory. And what that means is the gospel makes right what is wrong. When God made everything, it had glory on it. And uh, we spoken extensively that that's what righteousness is, is how God made things, is who God is, is what's attached to God, his his glory and his righteousness. And so whatever God made, it was righteous and it had glory. So the gospel is a gospel of glory. That means that the, the, the Holy Spirit power of God and the ability to see things the way that they're supposed to be and power attached to it to make things back right the way that God the way that God intended it from, from the beginning. Amen. And so that's why the Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first, but then also to the Greek, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to to faith. So the just shall live by faith. As we walk by faith, the righteousness of what God intended for us is revealed and we increase in the knowledge of God. As we increase in intimate knowledge of the Lord and with the Lord, it's, it's fellowship. The Lord reveals himself from the word of God. As the Lord reveals himself, we see the love of God. We see the righteousness of God and, and it is light and we respond to it. Amen. And so that we constantly and consistently teach that is not even enough to say one time that you made Jesus Lord, then go on and try to live a life without the Lord. That what God intended was a life of covenant. Amen. To be one with man and to give man his strength and man to give God his heart, his obedience and his service, that he would serve God or worship God. His life is a worship unto the Lord in acknowledgement that God is right. Why do you worship God? Because God is awesome. He is holy. He is right. He is righteous. We respond to that in worship. 
Amen. And so that's why the Bible talks about that God is spirit. Those that worship God must worship him in spirit and truth. That God is looking. The day is coming and now is when the true worshipers, true worshipers of God shall worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. And so because we, the real us is our heart or our spirit and God is spirit, we respond to God with our heart according to the truth. So we serve God. We worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Amen. And so the more earthly we are, the farther away heaven is from earth, you know. So heaven is called like a far country. But the more that we walk with God, the, the customs and, and the mannerisms and the ways of heaven become our ways. Amen. That we, we say that heaven is right, that God is right. And so we're not conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of our mind. In other words, that the word of God, the wisdom of God purifies our souls, washes our minds from the old. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. The old is passed away. Behold, look, observe, all things have become new and all things are of God. Amen. And so we've entered into peace with God. And then the Bible continues to say that we have been given a ministry of reconciliation. In other words, we continue to bring others into this same peace that we enjoy with God, that we are not at war with God anymore. And so now you understand why the, Jesus says, Matthew 24, 14, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all nations as a witness to the whole world. And then the end shall come. Amen. The gospel is a gospel of the kingdom. It's all about what kingdom you are of and knowing it, observing and perceiving and knowing what kingdom you are of and you, you purpose to be in the kingdom of God. Amen. The Bible says that we make it our aim to please the Lord in the kingdom of God. Those that are in his kingdom seek to please him, whether we're in the body or out the body. You know, the transition um, from earth to, to heaven, usually by death. But the Bible says, you know, if if Jesus comes, we'll be caught up. The transition is is one where we just sought to please the Lord. And also we understand that it is this the, the spirit of the world. Amen. It seeks to separate us from God by setting our affection on that which is beneath. The, the earth realm. But God says to set your affection on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of the fathers. Your citizenship is in heaven. Treat yourself as a sojourner and a pilgrim. Amen. A traveler, one who is traveling through this earth. You are an alien to the ways and customs of this earth. Though you were of the world, now you're, you, you're not of the world. You're simply in the world. But you operate by the kingdom of God and you operate by the spirit of God. So it's all about what kingdom you're of and what spirit you're of and knowing it. Amen. And so that's what the word of God does. It enlightens us. It causes that it separates light from darkness. Amen. That's what the word of God does. It shows you when you are a partaker of the light. And it would also so show a, a child of God if they were a partaker of darkness. So the Bible says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them for whatever makes manifest is light. Amen. So you cannot just be blind. You cannot be like um, 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 a baby that I just I didn't know. God says, I want you to know God wants to reveal his ways to you. Amen. But the. Heaven is far from the earth until you begin to interact with God. Know God. Amen. And the Bible says eternal life is knowing the Father and the Son. In, the, in God's kingdom, God's kingdom is an eternal kingdom. Amen. It, it, is, it, is, it is not confined to time and space. Amen. It is not limited. 
Amen. So the, the, the more you know God, the closer you are to him and his ways and the ways of heaven. Amen. Even so, if you are um, an ambassador or an emissary from from heaven, representing the ways of, of heaven, it is not far from you, though you are, are, are plowing away in this earth realm. You have the, the comfort of the Holy Spirit. You have the presence of God, which brings the things of heaven to earth. The Bible says that we should have days of heaven upon earth. So there should be a gap bridged between heaven and earth. By when, when we trust God and in, in interact with God in fellowship and by, by faith, there's no distance between us and the Lord. Amen. And so that 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 farness, we're, we're not so far away is what I'm trying to say. The closer you are to the Lord, the closer you are to heaven, even before it's time for you to go to heaven. Amen. And so we looked at Proverbs chapter 25. It says, as cold water to a, a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. Verse 26, a righteous man who falters before the wicked or bows before the wicked is like murk, a murky spring and a polluted whale. So it's cold waters to a thirsty soul. So it's good news from a far country. Heaven is called a far country. Amen. So good news, of course, is, is the gospel, the word of God, the gospel of peace, that which brings salvation and deliverance. Amen. That's good news. Amen. We, we don't preach a gospel that is not good news. The Bible says the gospel is good news. Good news is for the poor. Jesus the, said the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the to the poor. That means that you you don't have to be poor anymore. Because what does the gospel say? The gospel says we know the grace of our Lord Jesus, that though he was rich, yet for our sake, he became poor. Amen. That we through his poverty might be made rich. So the, there is an anointing, amen, upon the gospel, an anointing upon the word, amen, to make right that which is wrong, even when it comes to lack and poverty. The Bible says that I've been Young and I'm old, never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seat begging bread. There, there, there is good news in the word of God as it pertains to the, the to turn around the reversal of the evil report. The evil report is when um, it is it is said you don't have enough or that bills come and that and and and, and it is said that you don't have enough. To, to take care of that. You don't have enough to give into the kingdom. The, the, in the gospel, you have, your mind has to be renewed by the word of God. That the, the, the purpose of increase, amen, is to participate in the kingdom of God. That's the purpose of, of increase. Amen. The Bible says, let him who stole steal no longer but labor with his hand that he may have something to give. Amen. The Bible says that um, when you get into the land, he says that don't forget the Lord, for it is he that giveth the power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant in the earth. And then Jesus says all these things, the Gentile stuff and things and monies and, and, and the deceitfulness of riches, all these things the Gentiles seek after. Amen. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, what he intended, and all these things will be added unto you. So your mind has to be have to be renewed according to heaven's thoughts in heaven's ways. Amen. So as cold water to a thirsty soul, you're in this earth. The, the gospel, the word of God must be like cold water to a state of a person who is thirsty. That's, that's how you have to approach the good news. You cannot say, oh, I'll take it or leave it. No, you have to say, Lord, I can't make it without the word of God. Amen. Job says that he desired the word more than his necessary food. Amen. And Jesus played that out in this earth realm when he was ministering. And his disciples begged him to take something to eat. And Jesus says, I have food that you know not of. 
that my food, that that which satisfies me and fills me up is to do the will of the father. Amen. And so if your mind is is renewed, you, you are not like Nabal. When David sent to Nabal, he sent servants to Nabal to tell him, listen, we've we've been out here defending. We've been bodyguards to your shepherds out here. And, and they did not, we did not take anything from them. And as long as they were under our protection, they suffered no loss. And he says, now, if you can find anything in your, in your hand that to, to, to be a blessing to us, you know, then, then we would receive it. And Nabal's response is, who is this David? I don't know, David. Why should I take of mine and give unto him? Amen. Why should I take of mine? Now, remember, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. What does a person have that he did not first receive? Amen. When David gave the the equivalent of billions of dollars into the offering for the building of the temple, David says, Lord, what do I have that you didn't first give me first? Amen. And so that, that attitude that is a earthly attitude. That is mine. I worked for it. It's mine. Instead of saying it's God's. Amen. And the, the Bible says when it was in your hand, what it was in your power to do whatever, you know, that that's what Peter said to Ananias and Sapphira. Is it, that but you're supposed to be rich toward God. Amen. And so the increase comes from God. It is supposed to be whether you preach the gospel, amen, or whether you help those to preach the gospel, whether you, whether you, your soul winner, you help those that are soul winner, that you, your, your finances are supposed to be while you're in covenant with the Lord. Remember, this is intimacy and covenant with the Lord between you and the Lord. Your fellowship with the Lord is to find your, your place and that part is given back to God as an honor unto him, as fruits of righteousness, gifts, offering, a free will offering. Everything unto the Lord is free will. Amen. It's in your power, but it is to your benefit. It is more blessed to give than to receive. So as cold waters to a weary or a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. Amen. And like a muddy spring or polluted well, that uh, it is a righteous man who bows or falters before the wicked is like a muddy spring or polluted well. And what is that saying? That, that is saying that you are the righteousness of God. You're supposed to esteem the things of God and esteem the things of heaven and not to bow before the, the wicked. That pollutes everything. That it is the church, remember, that is called to be light and to be salt. As long as the church is bearing the light, is on a candlestick and representing the Lord, being on a candlestick set by God, representing the Lord, it's supposed to show right is right and wrong is wrong. Just it's supposed to be light. It's supposed to, the church. We we're supposed to walk in the light so that those that are in the dark, that they will not be confused, that the waters are not muddied. Amen. There's that that which is of light is light is clearly seen as light. You're either in the light or you're in the darkness. The church set on um, a candlestick to give light to the whole house. Amen. Um, the body of Christ we as individuals and we collectively that we're supposed to walk in the light, manifest the light, show forth the light. Amen. Let your light so shine, the Bible says before men, that they may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. So it is unbecoming for the righteous to bow before the wicked ways. Amen. To call or esteem the wicked ways as righteousness in this earth. God is looking for righteousness in this earth. He can work with righteousness. Amen. Righteousness would show that you're in covenant. God made you righteous. You're the righteousness of God. He called you to be one with him, to, to be one in the light. God is light and in him is no darkness. And so our fellowship, the Bible says in 1 John, is truly in the light. 
Our fellowship is in the light. Even before we can have fellowship with people, we have to have fellowship with God in the light. Amen. And so you're supposed to hunger and thirst for that which is righteous, that which is good news, the word as it comes from heaven to be your mandate, to, to be your principles and your precepts. I was going to say to be your laws, but, but people eat convolute that. They say you're trying to put people under the law. I'm saying there are ways of God. There, 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 is, there is a path of the Lord. There, there are precepts. Amen. There are principles of God. Amen which come forth from his word, which is light. And that's supposed to be your guiding force in this earth realm, which is dark. Amen. And if you do, you'll be a blessing to this earth realm. Amen. You don't help the, those in darkness by agreeing with the darkness and walking in darkness. That if two are in darkness, there's no power to pull them out of darkness. Amen. You, you, you will have to give an account. The Bible says in the book of Ezekiel, amen, it talks about that if, if man is in sin, amen, and, and God says that if you tell him, he says you, and, and that person um, receives you delivered him and the blood is not on your hand. If he does not receive, the blood, his blood is still not on your hands, amen. But if you don't tell him, then that blood is on your hands, amen. And so you have to represent light. You, you cannot equivocate. You, you cannot nuance. You, 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 you cannot be so sophisticated that no one knows where you stand. Amen. In a kingdom, it is required that you stand with the king. Amen. And you will receive honor from the king by standing with the king. All the assets and the force and the power of his kingdom is with you. Amen. And so when God sends someone from heaven, from his kingdom, amen, from Mount Zion, and that person represents God, then God will back him up. Amen. That is, it's, it's a beautiful voyage. It's a beautiful mission. How beautiful are the feet of those that bring glad tidings of good things. Amen. Those that stand before, before God on, on Zion. Amen. And so that's why the Bible says, don't be many masters. Don't be many teachers for there's a greater condemnation. Those that are called by God to represent God. You have to, when people, when you're representing God, that message must not be polluted. Amen. And so those that are called by God, whether, you know, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers, they touch the others upon this earth. Amen. And that same anointing goes with those. That's how the church came into being. And that's how the church operates. Amen. And so if if we would keep ourselves, then that message would not be polluted with the world, if it becomes polluted, amen, the Bible says a little leaven leaveneth the lump. If it becomes polluted, then it has no power to save and no power to deliver. All it does is, is try to keep people from feeling uncomfortable. And, and, it's, and it is causes, it's for people that don't want to suffer the reproach of, of Christ or don't want to suffer persecution by being associated with the Lord. That's those who make friends with the world. But the Bible says they are enmity or enemies of God. They are hostile toward God. The Bible says God so has, has no pleasure and those that are slack and draw back. Amen. And so, but you have to learn if you don't know that the ways of the world are, are, are here all the time. You know, the weeds, they just grow up with no effort. The ways of the world were here. Amen. And so those things would be um, um, drawing you, pulling you, teaching you until you learn God's ways. Then you have to disdain those ways which are of the curse, those which are of the world. Amen. So the Bible says the earth that drinks in the, the rain, it brings forth a, a harvest that is good for those in whom it was intended. But if it brings forth 
thorns and briars that it is cursed and, and it is and, and it is nigh to being um, damned. Amen. So the, the earth, we, we spoke about that, that, that brings in the rain. The rain represents that which is from above, that which is of the Lord. The shower of blessing is supposed to bring forth um, fruit unto God, righteous fruit unto God. Amen. And so it's cold as, as cold water to a thirsty soul. Uh, so is the Bible says good news from a far country and don't muddy up the water. That would be bowing before the wicked. Amen. And that is confusing. And God wants light to be light. He in the beginning, he separated the light from the darkness. Amen. So turn with me to Isaiah. What are we trying to do? We are trying to understand God's ways. And once we get understanding to actually walk in those ways, amen, you, you cannot just go through this earth as if there is no God. Because if, if you go through this earth and just live, then the ways of this earth will overtake you. Amen. You have to make an effort, amen, to choose God's ways. Amen. You, you have to have an encounter with the Lord, which changes your direction, your, 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 your projection, and, and changes your life into one which is an eternal life, which is walking with the Lord, where, where there is an obligation and responsibility unto God. In that covenant, God says, I will be your God, if you, and you will be my people. Amen. And so that means something. God being our God means that he brings all his strength to bear. Amen. To give us abundant life and to teach us his ways. Amen. You know, people can cite that the covenant of the Lord, that we're in covenant uh, with God, where God says that your, your iniquity and your lawless deeds, I will remember no more. But also part of that covenant, the Bible says, as it is written, they shall be taught of the Lord. Amen. And so the, 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 the symbolism is where we, we come to Mount Zion to partake of the wisdom of God. Amen. Where he sits us before us and teaches us his ways it, from an atmosphere of peace. Let me tell you something, that if you strive with God, it is like a storm. And, and, and it's like if, if God is trying to speak to you, it's like in the midst of a storm. Amen. But if, if you agree that God is right and you assemble before the Lord in an atmosphere of peace, knowing that God is God, giving him the, the honor and the glory, now we can be taught. Of the Lord. Amen. And so in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6, it says, Seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Amen. So, you know, the Bible says, if you seek, you will find. You got breath in your body, you can enter into the day of the Lord, the, the day that God intended for you, the day of his righteousness, his rest, his Sabbath, where his works were finished. You cease from your own ways, your own labors and enter into that day. So you got breath in your body. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So, so seek the Lord while he may be found. He, I have good news for you. If you got breath in your body, your mind is functioning where you can choose. Your, your chooser is working right. So you, the Lord can be found. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him when, while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous man, his thoughts. So if you're not walking in God's ways, you're walking in wickedness and you have to forsake that way. <laughs> Amen. You say, I thought, Apostle Kevin, I thought that was talking about those that are not saved. It does include those that are not saved. 
But that if a person is saved, but he is walking in his own way in resistance to God, then that is a way of wickedness. The Bible says the way of the transgressor is hard. Those that are transgressing God's way. Amen. And so that's why I said you have to get to the place where you know God is and you acknowledge that he has the right to be Lord because he is Lord. And that will in elicit a response for, from you. If God is God and you're standing before him, you would not um, clench your fist before God. Amen. If you acknowledge that God is God, that means something. Amen. And so you want God to be your God and you want to walk in his ways. Part of the covenant is that he's going to teach you his ways and you would have to walk in them. The expectation for you to be a child of God, not a rebellious child, not a prodigal son, that you would actually walk in his ways because you acknowledge that he was God. That's how you got saved. You acknowledge that Jesus was Lord. Amen. You acknowledge that he had the right to be Lord. That means he's Lord of all. That, that, that You don't come compartmentalize things. He's, he's Lord of all. That would cause you to respond to him as Lord. The Bible says that, um, how can the thing made say to the one that made it, why did you make me thus? And the Bible says, doth not the potter have power over the clay, over the lump? To make it the way that he want to. Amen. And so you, you would have to understand it's as, as silly as that picture looks. A lump of clay rebelling against the potter. That's, that's what we would do if you would not acknowledge him. Amen. That's what it means to our father, which art in heaven, hallowed would be the name. Holy, you know, acknowledging. That he is holy. And so that's why we worship. That's why we pray. We're simply acknowledging that he is God. And, and because of that, because we are not, our response is to praise, to worship. The, the, the scribes and Pharisees, when the uh, disciples and the children were praising Jesus as he rode into Jerusalem on, on a donkey, and they were saying, Hosanna to God in the highest Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. The, 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 the scribes and Pharisees were beside themselves. They said, do you not hear what they're saying? Make them stop. Jesus says, if they did not cry out, then the rocks would immediately cry out. <laughs> I like that word immediate because he is worthy of glory and honor. And so the, the minute that somebody says that um, I'm not going to praise God, immediately there is someone appointed to praise the Lord in another place. Amen. Because he's worthy. He cannot go. In heaven it is continuous, continuous praise unto God because he's worthy. Continuous praise unto Jesus because he's worthy. Amen. It, they, they are pointed to say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so we have to come to the knowledge of that. Remember, they know that in heaven. You know, how do they know? Because it is perfect righteousness, perfect light. Amen. They know it. Amen. That the Lord must be praised. Amen. David appointed praisers. Amen. That they would set their watch and they would praise the Lord. And those that left, others would come in and praise the Lord. Amen. Holy Ghost. You, you understand he is worthy. Amen. That's our response unto God. We are not God. He is God. Amen. He is Lord of all. Amen. And it, it is not a, a hard Thing. Amen. The Bible says when we praise the Lord, it causes the earth to yield its increase. This earth is hard. Amen. Fallow ground, darkness. Amen. But somebody knows to praise the Lord. Somebody knows that God is good. Amen. And so, because somebody knows, it causes the earth to yield because they're operating in the truth, the praisers, the worshipers. 
They are worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth. They are serving the Lord in spirit and in truth. So you have to understand that when you were born, life didn't start just when you were born. God had already created this thing, got it, got it started. Now you must awaken to the truth and begin to respond appropriately. Amen. That God is, is God. That's where the blessings come from. Amen. That's where the increase in the fruitfulness comes from. Amen. So God looks for those that understand that he is God. God, God looks for those. Amen. He is seeking those to serve him and to worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Those that know that he is God. Amen. So and let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God. And he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. So he says that my thoughts are not your thoughts. So God has thoughts. <laughs> Amen. The Bible says uh, numerous are his thoughts that as weighty as the sands of the shore that cannot even be counted. Amen. So he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my way. So without the Lord's ways, the way that you would be going would not be his ways. You have to receive his ways. Now, it says this is that this dynamic between heaven and earth. Amen. We have to bridge the gap. We have to bridge the distance between heaven and earth by walking in the spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit. By walking in his ways. Amen. The, the Holy Spirit. Amen. By walking in the Spirit. Amen. Those that are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God, the Bible says. And that, that um, those who walk by the Spirit, they will not fulfill the lust which are of the flesh, you know. Amen. So you, you, you're you not walking by the flesh. You're not walking by lust. You're not walking by the, the ways of the world. The way that you do the will of God and walk in his ways is to receive enlightenment by the Holy Spirit so that the word of God will be revealed unto you so that God will unleash and unlock his ways unto you and that they would be pleasant to you. In fact, that as as cold waters to a thirsty soul, you would crave God's ways and you would want more and more of God, more and more of his ways, more and more of his wisdom. Amen. That you you would run toward the Lord. Amen. That, that you will not put God off. I'm talking to someone who has put God off and said, I'll get around to it. You would not put God off. Amen. You would awaken to the fact that he is the one that you need. He's who you've been searching for. Jesus. His, it's the love that you've been desiring. It's the comfort. He's the warmth. Amen. He, he, he is that which removes the, the frustration out of your life. He is your fulfillment. He is your contentment. Amen. He is the one who will satisfy. Amen. He, he is the one that takes away that bad taste out of your mouth. Bad experience, things over time, because you tasted and seen that the Lord is good and gracious unto you. Amen. And so you you delight yourself in the Lord. Amen. If you if you know, you know, if you would have known, hey man, you would have responded. Amen. If you would have known, you would respond. Amen. If you if you would know, amen, the Lord, you would respond, amen. The impetus to responding is to know, amen, and to respond to the goodness of God, amen. It is the, it is the pollution of the world upon a person's mind that would be um, 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 against the Lord or not see the Lord according to his goodness, amen. It is it is it, it would be the pollution it would be a veil or scales over your eyes which would keep you amen that which comes from the world which would which would keep you from from desiring deeply the goodness of the lord amen 
And so that's what these messages are designed to do. It, it is to manifest Jesus in his glory. Amen. So that you can respond to the truth. Not some other Jesus. Not some other God. Not some other gospel. Amen. But according to the truth of the Lord. Amen. And so the ways of God are right. Amen. And the devil tries to pervert and make crooked the straight paths which are of the Lord. Amen. But God's ways are eternal from the, this, the, the, the beginnings. Amen. From everlasting to everlasting. His, his foundations from the, the, the beginnings of the world. Amen. That his ways are right and good. Amen. So God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. Amen. So that dynamic between heaven and earth, you must choose God's ways. Amen. Because they are a higher way. And that which is of the earth is, is said to be lowly. Amen. And, 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 and without glory. Amen. It's weak and beggarly. Amen. And frankly, they are not an option to the child of God. The, the ways of the world are not an option. Amen. We have to make it clear because some people think that you can be double minded. Amen. But the Bible says a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. Unstable in all his ways. Let not that man think that he will receive anything from the Lord. He's not walking into in covenant with the Lord. You know, covenant is a with God is a covenant of love. Amen. That once you have a revelation of the love of God, amen, there's nothing that you would withhold from the Lord. That's why the Bible says faith worketh by love. Amen. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Amen. So God's word, amen, is, is like seed that brings forth a harvest. The Bible says it's like the rains. And I explained to you that the rains of God is the shower of God's blessing. It represents the goodness of God. So God's word is like rain. God's word is like snow, that which refreshes. Amen. It's cold waters to a thirsty soul. So it's good news from a far country. Amen. That which comes down from above is the wisdom from above is pure, peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of righteousness and good fruits. Amen. The word of God, amen, is, is, is the blessings of the Lord or produces fruitfulness and increase. It brings about God's good. It brings forth God's good. So he's saying the dynamic between heaven and earth, amen, that which you desire comes from above, amen. It does not originate in this earth. The earth must be touched by that which is of above, amen, and that God has called you to, to operate by his ways, amen, so that you may be enlightened, amen, and so that, that the, the earth would bring forth and bud for you, amen, so that you will have a harvest, amen, of, of righteousness and something to, to show that you're one with God and something to give back to God, amen. So everyone in, is blessed in, in covenant, Everyone is blessed. God is pleased. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. God is pleased with your faith. Amen. And, and you are a, a delightful plant unto him. And, and you issue forth the fragrance of Jesus. Your life and your offerings unto God are pleasantness unto him. He's blessed by you. You are blessed 
by him. You're in covenant with the Lord. You're not striving with his ways. You're not trying to walk in your ways. Amen. That you're walking in the ways of God. Amen. And so oneness, this theme I preach over and over, oneness with the Lord. How do we get there? It's in the light. How do we get there? It's by the Holy Spirit. How do we get there? Amen. It is having the mind of Christ, that mind which would do the will of God. Amen. That mind which would humble himself. Amen. Have this mind in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Amen. And so that submission to God, submission to God's authority. Amen. Submission to the word of God. Amen. That's how we get there in oneness. Everybody's trying to, to bring people into unity and they're not using God's way. And I'm telling you that it, it will not work. And not only will it not work, that which comes out of it will be subtle to lead people away from the righteous paths, which are of the Lord. Amen. If you don't do it God's way, it, it, it is not of the Lord. Holy Ghost, if it's not God's way, amen, then it's, then it's not of the Lord, amen. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation, the old is passed away. Behold, all things have become new and all things are of God, amen. Don't, don't bring me that, that, that philosophical, that, 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 that scientific philosophical, that earth-based uh, knowledge. Amen. And tell me that that will work just as good as God. I'm, I'm here to tell you, amen, that God's way supersedes all other ways. In fact, the, 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 the ways of God controls the, the other ways. Amen. Is that which is, that is built upon the foundation of the Lord, that which is steeped in, in the Lord, that he controls the other ways. Amen. That which is above is greater. That which is above is mightier. Amen. God's wisdom is greater. Amen. And so you have to be renewed in your mind in true righteousness and holiness. Amen. So let's let's look at this being one with the Lord from a from a kingdom perspective. Let's look at Matthew chapter 12, Matthew chapter 12. And I believe we'll start with verse 22. And I'm reading out of the New King James, um, but I may refer back to the King James. It says, then one was brought to him who was demon possessed, blind and mute. And he, Jesus healed him so that the blind and the mute man both spoke and saw. And all the multitudes were amazed and said, could this be the son of David? Now, when the Pharisees heard it, they said, this fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. So Jesus taught the kingdom. He preached the kingdom. He demonstrated the kingdom. So these are, these are um, kingdom concepts and kingdom precepts. Amen. You, you know, we'll, I won't go all back into it, but simply to say there are two kingdoms, the kingdom of God, which is a kingdom of light and light defeats the darkness, obliterates the darkness. And God's kingdom is an, is an eternal, everlasting kingdom. And to his kingdom, there will be no end. The devil's kingdom is a kingdom of darkness, which as the kingdom of God advances, it destroys the works of darkness, the works of Satan. For this reason was Jesus manifested to destroy the works of the devil. So as the kingdom of God advances in light, it destroys the works of darkness. Amen. And so they are, the scribes and Pharisees are attributing to Jesus a work of darkness, but for what was a work of light. And so Jesus is teaching, he says, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. So every kingdom which is divided is brought to desolation. That, that word desolation usually means ruin, but the, the, the greater context in this instance, it says that it is void of power. 
to 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 every kingdom which is divided against itself it ties its hands it binds itself if a kingdom is divided it is void of power or its its power is not effective it doesn't work so that's what it means a kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation and every city or house divided against itself cannot stand amen and so or, 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 or if a city or a house is is divided it cannot stand that's why the devil operates in strife and division amen so that the city won't stand or the house will not stand amen that's why the devil tries to get into the church so that the church will be void of power and will not stand okay now if satan cast out satan he is divided against himself how then will his kingdom stand and if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. In other words, that their sons were, they, they were not casting out devils, you know, this, this, but Jesus was, amen. And the, 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 the power of heaven was with Jesus. And so that was a witness against them that they were, they were not, amen. Um. It says, but if I cast out demons by the spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God is come upon you. So I want you to get that. Jesus says, if I cast out demons by the spirit of God, that's what he was doing. He was casting out demons by the spirit of God. Amen. So what is he saying? He's saying it's, it's what the Lord, when he called me and he and he would call me to himself and teach me. He said one day, he says, it's all about kingdoms and spirits. <laughs> he made it very simple. He says, oh, what kingdom you are of and what spirit you are of. So I'm going to try to, with the time I have left, I'm going to try to explain these things. Okay. The, 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 the agent, the force behind the coming of the kingdom of God. Remember, the kingdom of God is advanced by light. Okay, the Holy Spirit brings to life. The kingdom of God is advanced by the lordship of Jesus or it expresses the lordship of Jesus. Amen. Um, that's done by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit declares the Lord. He manifests the Lord. He draws people unto the Lord. Okay. And so the kingdom of God that when the when the Holy Spirit will execute judgment against the forces of darkness, and that's how the kingdom comes. Amen. The, the Bible says, above all, taking the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The Holy Spirit uses the Word of God to execute the written judgment against the devil. Amen. You're not supposed to be here. That's unrighteousness. So the Holy Spirit is the power, the force, the light. He he also um he he guides and leads us into all truth. Or he he shows what is the truth or he manifests the truth. So Okay, if there is sickness, that is a lie from the devil. It is a lie against the truth. It is a lie against the righteousness of God, which he intended from the beginning. He did not intend you to be sick because he did not make man to be sick. That came after sin. Okay, so the Holy Spirit comes to bring back the, 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 the blessed state. The righteous state that which God intended from the beginning. When he does, he brings power to bear on the word of God. Remember what I said in, in Romans 1 16. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It's the power. It's the power. It's the power of God unto what? Salvation. Salvation is more than being saved, but delivered. Amen. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God unto salvation if you believe it. Who hath believed our report? That's the good news. And to whom has the arm, the strength of the Lord been revealed? So it's all through the scripture. Amen. If you can, if you can receive that. So 
They accused Jesus of casting out devils by a prince of devils. Jesus, that's ludicrous because that would mean a kingdom would be divided against itself. That kingdom would be brought to desolation. That would mean that the that house would be brought again, divided against itself. That house cannot stand. Amen. So the kingdom of God, the, the force behind the kingdom of God is the Holy Spirit that execute judgment of the word of God. The, the word of God releases the blessing to us or that blessed righteous state. Amen. The Bible says Jesus himself took um, our infirmities and bare sickness. The Bible says himself um, um, took our sins in his body on the tree that we should live unto righteousness and by his stripes we are healed. Amen. It speaks of the righteousness of God and it speaks of the healing power of God that uh, uh, along with healing, it is the, it brings forth is because of righteousness to, to, to heal sickness and to remove pain is to make righteous. Amen. To bring back into a righteous state. Amen. And so that is the power of the Holy Spirit that brings forth or causes the kingdom of God to come. If I cast out devils, by the Spirit of God, then is the kingdom of God come unto you. And then in Luke, it talks about 11, 20, I believe, it talks about the same scripture. It says that if I cast out devils by the finger of God, the finger of God represents judgment against the, the forces of darkness. Amen. Every time you see God's finger, you would see judgment, not against those who believe, but against those who are trying to hold something in an unrighteous state. But if you have accepted the gift of righteousness, then that unrighteousness is illegal. You have a right, amen, for the kingdom of God to come unto you. Amen. So, it's the kingdom of God, amen, is, it is enforced or brought to bear by the Spirit of God. The kingdom of the world comes about by the spirit of the world. So it's, remember what the Lord told me. He says, it's all about kingdoms, what kingdom you're of and what spirit you're of. Amen. That if you're operating by the spirit of the world, you would automatically resist the spirit of God. That's why you would resist the spirit of God. That's why there are people that resist, you know, the, 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 the concept, the thought that a person can be healed by the power of God that's on the word of God. They resist it. And that so they're resisting Holy Ghost power. You understand? Those same people may say, well, you know, I trust that a doctor would be able to do something, but I don't know it about, you know, um, 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 speaking the word and, 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 and all that Holy Spirit stuff. Amen. They would resist it. Why? Because they would be representing the devil's kingdom because they would be operating by the spirit of the world. What is the spirit of the world? The Bible says God has not given us a spirit of bondage by fear, but a spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. God has not given us a a spirit of bondage again to fear, but a spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. So the spirit of bondage to fear is the spirit of the world. It is to keep you in bondage, amen, by fear, amen. So the spirit of the world is the type of the Pharaoh of Egypt to keep you in bondage, to, to keep you serving the world, to be bowed down in, and to serve with rigor, to be so consumed with the ways of the world and striving and, and working uh, for, the, for the benefit of Pharaoh. The Bible says that they built treasure cities. The children of Israel built treasure, storage cities for treasure so that the treasure would be in the world for Pharaoh. <laughs> Amen. And he had their minds so mixed up that that they would strive about, you know, we don't have straw. You making Pharaoh mad at us. 
Amen. He's taken away the strong. So you, you're consumed about pleasing Pharaoh, which is the spirit of the world. Amen. So God, what does God say? Moses, go tell Pharaoh to set my people free so that they may worship me. I need them to be saved, set apart. They can't do it in the world. They can't do it in Egypt. I need to separate them from the world and teach them worship so they can know how to be free. If you this what we began preaching in the beginning of this message about that acknowledging that God is God through your worship. Amen. It's where you are free. But I tell you what, if not, you are striving to please the dictates of the world. Amen. And you don't want the world mad. You don't want to upset the apple cart. Amen. So you won't be a true worshiper. God is searching for true worshipers who will worship him in spirit and in truth. So we've come full circle from the beginning. Amen. And so that Pharaoh says, I'm going to use wicked wisdom from Satan. That's, that's what Pharaoh said. He says, listen, the, the children of Israel that they have increased, they're multiplied. They're my, he acknowledged, this is what the devil says, they're mightier than us, but they don't know it. And I'm, I, I am inserting that parenthetically. They're greater, they're mightier than us, but they don't know it. Let's deal with them shrewdly, craftily. Let's use the devil's wicked wisdom so that they don't realize their potential through serving God and worshiping God. Amen. And so that he he caused them to serve, to become slaves, to be, it was called the house of bondage. Amen. And so they were so consumed in, ser in serving Pharaoh that they did not serve God. They, they did not look up to God. They were bowed over with their work. Amen. And so it's a picture, an image of what the spirit of the world wants to do to us. He wants us to be con so consumed. People say, you know, that they are too heavenly minded to be any earthly good. And you got to keep it real. And it's all about paying the rent. You see how you were consumed in the world to serve Pharaoh. It's, it's all about the Benjamins. It's all about the dollars, you know, that I would do anything for the dollar. You, you're in bondage. Amen. Because the devil can manipulate that because you're under his spirit, the spirit of the world, the spirit of mammon. Holy Ghost. The Bible says, oh, I wish I had more time on this one. The Bible says that that you cannot serve God and mammon, that way of the world. You love one, hate the other. You cling to one, despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot do both. Amen. And so that's, oh, I, you, Puktaramo, Riba, Holy Ghost, man, whoo, that's what God has done. He has, he has given us an anointing to separate people from the world to, so that they may enter into the liberty of God through worship. <laughs> man, whoo. Man, that power, Holy Ghost power. Well, <laughs> I sense the power of God <laughs> on this message, even as it is. Amen. There's a lot to say. Amen. But I believe the anointing of God is upon this message to separate you from the spirit of the world and the ways of the world to usher you into a new place of worship unto God where you will discover God and discover his ways and that will unlock new paths and direction for you. <laughs> Holy God. That even this is a demonstration. When, when the Holy Ghost comes, I must yield to him. I, I can't do my way. I can't, I can't say I got other things I want to say. The Lord is, is directing me to speak to you, to release an anointing. Amen. And it is the anointing which destroys the yoke. Amen. 
And I say, shackles will break off of you. Arabata is the sound of this word. I, I, I hear snapping and crackling. Amen. Of, of chains being broken. Holy Ghost. <laughs> Praise be to God. I, I see the Lord ushering you into a new place as he calls you and draws you unto himself. Amen. And, and he's giving you, now check this out, uh, he's giving you <laughs> a new assignment. This is what I'm hearing by the Lord, and it shall be clear uh, to you. A Holy Ghost assignment which shows that you are defying the spirit of the world. Amen. And that you are joined unto the Lord. Amen. The Lord is giving you a new assignment from him. And that assignment will defy Pharaoh, <laughs> amen, and bring you into a place of appreciating the Lord and worshiping the Lord, amen, and that assignment, amen, will be of the Lord, amen. It, it will usher you into a deeper walk in the things of God and participating whether it be that kormakashata mormakishandarabukashantabaka, Jambrota <laughs> Chata. I have to be careful how I say it because people yeah, ministry. I, I'm not I'm not necessarily saying that 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 you would automatically walk in ministry, but the connection to the kingdom of God and the connection to ministry and the connection to being taught by the Lord. I speak by the Spirit of God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Holy Ghost. 